Hello guys, welcome to the second episode of the Remote Workforce Podcast. I'm Krzysztof Bulski, Managing Director of Molecule Group, a consultancy specializing in digital transformation, communications and marketing. We are a 100% remote working company. My work has been partly or fully remote for the last eight years. I've been living in different locations, different countries around Europe and Southeast Asia. I also run a very busy family life. In this second episode, I would like to discuss the principles and rules of working remotely. And I'd like to begin by discussing a book that has shaped my mindset about how I want to work and how I believe that teams I build should be working. It's a book I recommend to anyone looking to transform their company's work environment for better results. It's a book I came across in 2010, wrote by Kali Ressler and Jody Thompson. And the title of this book actually says it all. Why work sucks and how to fix it. Ressler and Thompson introduce a concept they call results only work environment, R-O-W-E. The main idea of the concept is to provide employees true autonomy and work ownership in the workplace. A workplace where anyone, regardless of their position, can do whatever they want, whenever they want, as long as the work gets done. It sounds simple and amazing, but it is actually not easy to implement without understanding some of the core principles. Working in such conditions requires a high degree of autonomy and responsibility both from the employees and the managers. So, for instance, employees cannot pretend uh, to be active at work since it's not the time spent at the office, at the desk that counts, only the results. On the other hand, managers are required to be very clear in assigning tasks and explaining what results they expect. It is an environment where you can't just assign tasks in the mode, get on with it, You have to be specific about the result of work you expect, when you expect it, and what details should be taken into account. If you've ever worked with a boss who couldn't tell you clearly what he or she expects and whose criticism of your work was lacking any specifics, I'm sure you know what I mean. So the foundation of good work in a remote work environment is good communication. It's important in any work environment, of course, but in remote working, it's an absolute must. And actually the first rule of communicating when working remotely is you have to communicate. What I mean by that is that you have to be available. You have to be responsive and proactive. A good practice is to always reply to requests. If you receive a task, don't just start working on it. Make people aware that you got the message and maybe when they should expect uh, to get you to get back to them. A simple message like well noted, well received uh, will do the job. Be in touch with your team, ask for support, share project updates so everyone can contribute. When you work in a remote uh, environment, you most probably have a tool. So it's simple things. Communicate the project status, your progress in the project management tool your team is uh, using. If you receive a calendar invite, accept or decline. Don't ghost people. Another skill that I find very important in communicating as a remote team is the ability to communicate efficiently based on long-form writing. It's much more efficient than something that might seem easier, this you know tradition of quick meetings, chatting, uh, discussing something on a call or, or, or on WhatsApp. Long-form writing forces you to share tasks in a precise and thoughtful way. The knowledge, the, the, the messages, the, the, the briefs for projects you share will be will have a better structure. Your, your thoughts will be clear because you will have to rethink what you actually want to share with your colleagues before sending the message. You have to remember that poor communication will always create more work. So it's your responsibility as the author of any message for providing your recipient with a clear, understandable task or assignment or feedback or comment. Meetings can be very helpful, but nothing is as clear and efficient as a long, precisely outlined message with bullet points, explanations, links, and whatever else needs to be there. So 
For example, at Molecule Group, we use Basecamp as our main project management and, and communications tool. Every project starts with a carefully prepared space that includes a project description, a to-do list with assigned tasks and deadlines. Each project is shared with the people who are involved in the project. What is central to our work is deadlines and to-dos, simply because only by pushing projects forward we make money. And we found that only if you put things into the perspective of a to-do with a deadline, we feel that we have the project under control. Also, after working with Basecamp for many years and practicing long-form writing and practicing the habit of tracking every project progress within the app in a written form, we found that it helps a lot if we need to search back for some details of the project. Maybe we need to see what was actually agreed at the beginning. If this would be discussed in a meeting, there would be no track of it in the tool. But if it's written, it's searchable. Another thing we found is very useful is when we work with contractors or freelancers, we try to impose our working style, our methods of communication, and we demand consistency as often as possible. Another important principle of remote work is trust. You have to trust your team and your team has to trust you. It's vital because without trust, there is no way you will be able to build a healthy, inclusive culture. Nobody wants to work. I mean, nobody feels good when having to work in a work environment that is based on suspicion, that is based on micromanagement, that is based on spending more time reporting what you worked on than real work. Lack of trust might give you the illusion of having things under control and moving forward with tasks. But I don't think that your business is fueled by illusion. Unless it is, you have to empower your team with trust and treat everyone on the team like an adult. When you're moving to a remote work environment with your team, one thing what you have to be prepared for is to prioritize asynchronous communication. You have to be open, to be flexible about the times when people work, how they work, because people will want to take advantage of working from home, of working from some remote locations. And most people I know actually start feeling empowered to take their day, their schedule under control, to work out ways to be more efficient, to work out ways to be less stressed, maybe to have some breaks within the day they wouldn't normally be able to do when they're at the office. And it all has a significant effect on how we work and what we deliver. Happy people will always deliver better results. And of course, you have to control your people. You have to control that the work gets done. But I'm just trying to urge you to focus on the outcomes, on the results, rather than on how it gets achieved how work gets done, unless this matters from the perspective of your business. But if not, give people flexibility. And last but not least, teach people to set and respect boundaries. It's very easy to lose track of when the work starts and when it finishes. So work out with your team what are the boundaries where people can get disconnected. This is especially important with teams that work through different time zones. It's important to have rules which team uh, is available at what time and at what time they should not be expected to respond. So to sum it up, the key principles of working well in a remote-based uh, uh, environment are mostly focusing on how you communicate, how you plan your work, and also how you treat your co-workers. So this was episode number two of the Remote Workforce Podcast by Molecule Group. I hope the podcast was useful to you. If you'd like to join us for one of the future episodes, please make sure to follow our social media channels or subscribe to our newsletter. Until then, take care.